My name is Joseph D'August. And my name is Carol Shansky. And welcome to the Society for American Music's digital lecture series. We're going to introduce you to klezmer, a musical genre that had its roots in Europe but experienced a rebirth in the United States. In this video, we'll be talking about the history of klezmer, musical characteristics, famous performers, and then perform three musical examples. The word klezmer originates from two Hebrew words, kle and zemer, which translates to instrument of song. It has come to mean not only the genre of music, but also how we refer to the musicians who play it. For example, he is a klezmer and she is a klezmer. They play klezmer. Klezmer is defined as the wedding and party music of the Jewish culture, which spread in much of Central and Eastern Europe. Although we can trace the lineage of klezmer back to the second century CE, most of what we associate today as having a klezmer sound dates back to the 19th century. Klezmer is largely considered to be the instrumental music based on folk song traditions of the European Yiddish-speaking population. Yiddish is a language composed of vocabulary from several other languages, including German, Russian, Hebrew, English, and assorted others. It became a universal language among Eastern European Jews. No matter what their country of origin, a Jewish person could always converse in Yiddish, even if their native language was different. When the Jews immigrated to the United States, so did Yiddish. There was a significant wave of immigration to the United States in the time between the 1880s and 1924, at which point restrictive immigration quotas were instituted. This was largely fueled by economic and social conditions in Europe, especially the Eastern European countries of Russia, Austro-Hungary, and Romania, where in addition to poverty and restrictive municipal laws, pogroms were an ongoing danger. Pogroms were violent attacks on Jewish communities that were either tolerated by local officials or, in some cases, encouraged by them. The prospect of freedom and the potential for financial success drove many to America, particularly New York City, where Jewish communities had been established. Many klezmer musicians settled in America, but seeking employment as musicians was extremely difficult because they were banned from the American Federation of Musicians at that time. So in turn, they created their own union in order to survive economically and practice their craft. As the Jewish population increased, a genre of Yiddish theater evolved, spanning a range of styles from Yiddish versions of Shakespeare to comedy and musical theater. The clarinet emerged as the primary lead instrument in American klezmer bands. While there were a number of major artists, we are going to profile two of them, Dave Taras and Naftul Bramlein. Dave Taras was born in the Ukraine to a family in which three generations had been klezmer musicians. He learned to play clarinet, and when he was drafted into the Russian army before the revolution, his abilities led him to performing for generals at the front lines of World War I. In 1921, he fled the pogroms in Russia and came to the United States. Mr. Taras's style brought together the music he had learned as a child with the Tin Pan Alley songs and jazz he was exposed to in New York. He was a virtuoso player and one of the pioneering klezmer musicians to assimilate klezmer and jazz music without losing traditional feeling and inflections. In New York, Taras played the clarinet in many bands such as the Abe Schwartz Orchestra and grew to become one of the top instrumentalists in Yiddish theater during the 1920s and 1930s. From the 1930s into the 1950s, Mr. Taras had his own radio show on various New York stations. He led klezmer bands at over 1,000 weddings in and around New York City. He also composed hundreds of traditional style tunes and recorded beginning in 1924 for labels including Columbia, Victor, and Decca. Naftul Brandwein wanted to be the wild boy of klezmer. He was known to be a great entertainer above all, 
but was also one of the greatest klezmer clarinetists of his time. He performed using many gimmicks, such as wearing an Uncle Sam costume full of lights, which nearly electrocuted him. He frequently performed with his back to the audience to hide his secret fingerings, and he wore a neon Naftul Brandwine Orchestra sign around his neck. Born in Galicia, in the Ukraine, into a musical family, he played cornet originally with the local gypsy and Polish musicians. He later switched to clarinet and arrived in New York in 1908. He promoted himself as the king of Jewish music and played on early records with Abe Schwartz. By 1922, he had changed labels from Columbia to Victor and was leading his own band. Social forces almost caused the complete extinction of klezmer music, murder, and assimilation. The Holocaust resulted in the murder of approximately six million Jews in Europe, but assimilation in the United States had an impact as well. First generation Jews before and after the Holocaust were not interested in a music genre that reflected back on the European experience of isolation due to their religious and cultural practices being different from their Gentile neighbors and therefore suspect. These new Americans wanted to fit in, and that included the absorption of American cultural practices. In addition, the founding of the State of Israel and the selection of Hebrew, rather than Yiddish, as the national language, further underscored the desire to shed the trappings of the old world life. During the 1970s, a lot of young musicians began searching for their roots in a wave of renewed interest in folk music. The Klezmatics, Klezmer Conservatory Band, Andy Statman Jazz Orchestra, and the renowned Klezmer artist Giora Feidman all came out of this resurgence. While some of the revival bands were traditional, others modernized the music to put their own spin on the tradition. Gura Feynman earned the title King of Klezmer after performing worldwide for over 50 years. He played with the Israel Philharmonic for 20 years, where he was the youngest member ever to join the orchestra. He left the orchestra to pursue a career as a Klezmer. He has recorded with every major classical artist of our time and was selected by Steven Spielberg to record for the movie Schindler's List. like the community it represents, is an organic and flexible musical genre. It is ever adapting, taking on elements of jazz and contemporary music, led by artists such as John Zorn and David Krakauer. In an example of reverse immigration, Klezmer has experienced a rebirth and growth in Europe. A characteristic feature of Klezmer music are the expressive cantorial sounds, which are reproduced on modern instruments. These can be done on almost any instrument, but we're going to demonstrate on the clarinet and flute. Long notes are often embellished with bends on the clarinet, and trills and mordants are also used on the flute. Trill, mordant. The clarinet mimics the cantorial cry, or sometimes it sounds like a laugh. Because of the open holes on the body of the clarinet, it can create what's called a finger vibrato, where the air is disrupted and wavers. We will now play three representative tunes from the Klezmer repertoire. We are joined by pianist Olga Sidisius. 
Since our first selection is a combination of two tune types, the doina and the freilach, we will introduce these together. A doina is a free, recitative-like solo movement. It very much mimics a nigun, which is a wordless melody sung by cantors, who would improvise them as lead-ins to a song. Doinas are highly expressive and technically showy. Listen for the finger vibrato in the clarinet. Doinas are usually immediately followed by an upbeat song, often a freilach. Freilach means joyful, and that sense of celebration is reflected in the fast tempo, wide range, and overall energy of the song. Listen for the clarinet laugh and the flute trills and note bends. tune is a hora. You may have heard the dance term hora if you've gone to a Jewish wedding or bar mitzvah. Those circle dances are quite fast and surround the wedding couple or honoree. Horas such as these are derived from Israeli folk dance. The horas played by klezmer bands are not the same dance type. Klezmer horas are derived from Romanian horas and are slow and in triple meter with heavy emphasis on the first beat, which would conform to the dance steps used. While you listen, feel the organization of three beats like a slow waltz, as well as the ornamentation in the wind instruments.
Our final tune is a bulgar. Bulgars are in essence the same as freilachs. There may be some differences in geographic origin, thus the difference in name. We have chosen a bulgar that underscores the absorption of klezmer into American culture. Der Stiller bulgar, the quiet bulgar, was used as the basis for the Benny Goodman 1939 hit, And the Angels Sing. One of his trumpet players, Ziggy Elman, had been a klezmer musician and contributed it. As you listen, note the musical conversation between the flute and clarinet, which is a feature of klezmer bands. It's been our great privilege to introduce you to a musical genre that we love. We hope that this digital lecture will inspire you to dive deeper into the rich tradition of klezmer. We'd like to thank the Society for American Music for this opportunity, and thank you all for watching.